is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. How do you deal with the dark side of your own inner life? How do you deal with such unruly torments and turmoils as anger, impatience, fear, greed, intolerance? For multiplied millions of human beings, the living of a good life is a tremendously difficult ordeal. The proverb goes, opportunity knocks only once, but temptation keeps banging on the door year after year after year. But the way to deal with your temptations and your pet evils is to become such an inherently spiritually strong person that you are always in a condition of genuine self-mastery. And such a victory can be won only through the power and guidance of the divine spirit indwelling your mortal mind. You know, one of the most exciting truths you can realize is that you really can change. You can break free from any and all of the evil, unproductive, self-defeating ways of thinking and living which may have been yours in the past. The ancient Greek philosopher Aristotle once said the worst thing about slavery is that eventually the slaves begin to like it. Through the years I have seen men and women and young people actually accept their own enslavements. Enslavements to anger, impatience, fear, greed, intolerance, to alcohol, drugs, worry, depression, doubt, and despair. And yet I urge in the strongest terms, refuse to become comfortable with enslavement. Break free from the shackles which bind you and claim if for the first time in your life your true and authentic spiritual sonship or daughterhood with God. Reject slavery in any and all of its forms and live as you were born and created to live as a child of God here and now and in all eternity in the joy and the freedom born of your faith found experience of knowing the father of all the universe. Let me deal therefore first with the subject of anger. Mark Twain once said, when you're angry, count to four. When you're very angry, swear. But Jesus of Nazareth said, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, pray for those who despitefully use you. For if you face the light, the shadows will fall behind. Anger is utterly destructive, not only of emotional equipoise, but also of human relationships. People with clenched fists simply cannot shake hands. Let love be the master of your life, the living love of God and the love of others. The very act of getting angry is like standing out under a hornet's nest, beating on it with a wooden stick and crying out at all the pain as you're repeatedly stung and stung and stung again and that only makes you all the angrier so you beat on the hornet's nest all the harder in your vengeance against all those wretched hornets and that is what anger does. It is one of the unhealthiest things you can do to yourself, biochemically, psychologically, philosophically, and spiritually. Next, consider the topic, impatience. Historians say that when the great artist Leonardo da Vinci was painting his famous Last Supper, he was chided for standing for hours before his canvas without making one single stroke. But he replied, when I pause the longest, I am about to make the most telling strokes with my brush. Greatness consists not only in acting, but in acting with a well-planned and patient purpose. One of the greatest antidotes to impatience and other emotional fluctuations I've ever heard is the saying of a dear old friend of mine from Oklahoma, press on regardless. Quite simply refuse to give up. And remember, if you wholeheartedly give your life to God, nothing absolutely nothing is impossible. Fear not, be not anxious, have faith in God, and press on regardless, regardless of your angers, impatiences, fears, greeds, and intolerance. Be willing to give your life to the living God who gave you your life in the first place. Consider next the issue of fear. Psychologists for years have said that fear and worry kill more people than work does. The word scare and the word scarcity are from the same roots. Fear is often based on a sense of lack and want and need. But the God of all this universe will meet your every need. Said Jesus, it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The greatest need of this entire planet in this hour is for a new age of faith, a new daring to believe in eternal things, an awakening to trust in God. Do the very best you can in doing the work God has set before your life, and after doing the best you can with the task before you, be not anxious, sleep in peace, for God will be awake, and your life is in larger hands than your own. 
The great fear for many mortals on this earth is death. It was Benjamin Franklin who said, nothing is certain but death and taxes, and would you not prefer that they came in that order? But each and every one of us is destined one day to die, yet the greatest spiritual teachers in human history have taught techniques by means of which you can outlive your body. Eternal life begins in the moment that you begin to live your life by eternal values, truth and beauty and goodness, and in love for God and love for others. And fearlessly, forever, said Jesus, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Consider greed. Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world but loses his own soul? He said, lay up your treasures in heaven. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The great humanitarian Dr. Albert Schweitzer has written, and I quote, a civilization which develops only on its material side and not in corresponding measure on its mental and spiritual side is like a vessel with a defective steering gear which gets out of control at a constantly accelerating pace and drifts toward catastrophe. End of quote. The most urgent need of our planet is a spiritual renaissance, for there is enough upon this earth to satisfy the needs of humankind, but there will never be enough upon this planet to satiate the greeds of humankind. And then lastly, I turn to the topic of intolerance. Back in my home state of Kansas during the frontier days, there was a story about two ranchers who got in a terrible, awful fight, and in court, the two attorneys brought forth the weapons which had been used, a baseball bat, a rake, a bayonet, a pickaxe, boy knife, tomahawk, shovel, 10 feet of chain. After deliberating for about 15 minutes, the 12 jurymen filed in slowly, and the foreman read the verdict. We, the jury, would have given $10 apiece to have seen that fight. Now, some people, you know, absolutely seem to love to see other people fight. But Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Where there is enmity and anger, sow the seeds of understanding and of love, and thus fulfill in your life the high purpose of bringing compassion, peace, and harmony to a troubled, troubled world. Jesus said, Judge not that you be not judged. People are individuals. They run the gamut from the extreme introvert who's too shy to lead a group in silent prayer to the extreme extrovert who's always in the middle of a crowd, the life of the party. You know, I've heard people say, if I were that person, I wouldn't do that. Well, I say if you were that person, then he wouldn't be that person. You would respect people's individuality. One of the greatest hopes for humankind is that individuals will learn to become truly honest and sincere in their dealings with one another. A slanderer will say things behind your back that he wouldn't say to your face. And a flatterer will say things to your face he wouldn't say behind your back. But a truly loving individual is honest, sincere, and ever seeking to bring goodness into the lives of other human beings. Of course, there will be a diversity of opinions. One high school girl said she quit going out with a boy because she disagreed with his bumper sticker and he disagreed with her T-shirt. There will always be conflicting, contending variances of viewpoint on a whole array of religious, social, economic, and political topics. But there is one splendid truth which I believe will one day win the wholehearted belief of all the peoples of this planet, the truth that we are children of God and brothers to one another and members in one worldwide family of God, and that the time has come that we begin to behave that way. You know, for years I've loved playing the guitar. There are many styles of guitar playing. Two guitarists could play the same instrument in such different styles that the listener would hardly believe it could be the same guitar, but it is. The same is true of banjos. The guitar may be perfectly in tune and up to pitch, but in the hands of one player it is an instrument of discord, while in the hands of another player a breathtaking expression of beauty. And so with the living of human life, just as both discord and harmony are potential on any guitar, but what you get out of it depends upon how you play it. In precisely the same way, both discordant, miserable unhappiness and the most elevated spiritual joy are potential in the living of human life. Not long ago I was flying out of Denver, Colorado. It was during a speaking tour. And I noticed this item in the local newspaper. Quote, a police officer chased down a hooded suspect in a bank robbery on Tuesday, took off his mask, and discovered 
It was his brother. End of quote. The article went on to say that a silent hold-up alarm came in from a local Denver bank. The police patrolman sped to the scene of the crime, and upon apprehension of the three ski-masked robbers, he discovered to his dismay, the patrolman did, that one of them was his 47-year-old brother. And yet, I say that in a larger sense, that is the pain of every wrongdoing, every suffering, tragedy, war, murder, rape, assault, hatred, and cruelty upon this planet. It is all happening to our brothers, yours and mine. For all of us upon this globe are spiritually interrelated, brothers and sisters in one great family, the children of the Father of all reality, the first source and center of all things and beings, who gave us our very breath, the living God. And until the day that humankind can see every individual on this earth, high and low, rich and poor, criminal or victim, powerful or powerless, famous or unknown, as truly the members of one spiritual family, there shall be no end to the passive and uncaring ambivalence with which so many view the plights of others upon this earth and an end to the intolerance which has brought such havoc upon this planet. Behind the mask of every criminal I see my brother's face and the crowds of the passing multitudes in New York or New Delhi, in China and Australia, from island villages to the ice-capped barren reaches of the north, from the cities to gatherings of mud-packed thatched roof huts, from the dunes of the desert to the tundra of the poles, in every face, I see my brother's face. In galleries of art, on statues in public squares, in the pages of history, century by century, among scientists, philosophers, educators, statesmen, and all of the noble achievers of this world, there too I see my brother's and my sister's faces. For all of us upon this earth, I say, are the children of one God, and brothers of one blood and members in one great worldwide family of God. And the gospel of Jesus of Nazareth will one day rule this very earth. For Jesus said, by this will all men know that you are my disciples, that you love one another. If you, whoever you are listening to this radio broadcast across the United States of America, in Europe or Asia or Africa, Australia, the Middle East, China, the Caribbean, wherever, if you will give your life to the living God who gave you your life, in this moment you will have begun the greatest time of transformation in your personal history. Now, you may not be what you ought to be, and you may not be what you want to be, but by the grace and power of God you will not be what you used to be, for lying before you this day is a new life of faith and hope and love and of mastery of the pet evils which may have plagued you for the decades of your life. You can and you will achieve the victory of spirit. For according to your faith, said Jesus, so shall it be to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened. Ask and you will receive. Then write to us, will you? At the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, there's a reason for your life. And haven't you always felt it? Haven't you always really known it inside? There's a reason for your existence. God has a will for you. I've written free literature on the spiritual life. On these very things, yours without cost, charge, or obligation, when you write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, The Fatherhood of God, The Brotherhood of Man, Life After Death, What Happens to You When You Die, What Lies Beyond. All of this, yours with no cost, charge, or obligation when you write to us. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave Network, let me spell out mailing address box 3080 Oakhurst, O A K H U R S T, California, C A L I F O R N I A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non sectarian, non profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.